Shiradhamadhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavallava Giri Varadhari Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janapalava Giri Varadhari Yasodanandana Praja Janaranjana Yasodanandana Praja Janaranjana Jamuna Tira Panachari Jamuna Tira Panachari Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Radharamana Hadi Govinda Chaya Chaya Radharamana Hadi Govinda Chaya Chaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Radharamana Hadi Govinda Jaya Jaya Radharamana Hadi Govinda Jaya Jaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Shri Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Govinda Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya
Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. the deep ball. I am very honored to be at this auspicious ceremony. 
I would like to congratulate all of Raghunathji's students for your good fortune. <laughs> Raghunath is one of the greatest yoga teachers, one of the greatest life teachers, and one of my very dearest best friends. He truly cares about people's hearts and people's lives. To have a teacher like that is very special. There is mechanical processes of teaching and learning. They give us information and tools in life, but they do not nourish our character. They do not make us enlightened. Not long ago, somebody was asking my opinion of what skills are required and what techniques to care about people. I thought about it for about two seconds. And my reply was to really care about people. If you really care, then you're going to go to the to whatever extent is required to help someone. We could have so many skills and techniques and training courses and seminars and graduation degrees, but we won't really be empowered by the super soul, the Paramatma, unless we really care. What does it mean to care? Everyone in this world has three levels of being. In fact, in Sanskrit, there's a word Atma. The word Atma means the body, the physical body. The word Atma means the mind. And the essence of the word Atma means the living being, the living force, the, the soul that gives consciousness to the body and mind. And the Paramatma is the Supreme Atma, or God, Bhagavan, Sri Krishna. So actual care, if we really are concerned with the quality of a person's life, my beloved Guru, Srila Prabhupada, in many ceremonies, he would, he would cite a famous Sanskrit phrase, may all beings be happy. He said that this is the, <clears throat> at one marriage ceremony, he said this is the purpose of marriage, to make each other happy and as a couple together to make the society and the world happy. Marriage is a team. Unless the husband and wife make each other happy, they're not going to be in the mood to make anyone else happy. <laughs> so to make each other happy, to make children happy, and to make the society and the world around them happy. And Prabhupada said that's the purpose of yoga. It's very interesting because because if we really study what yoga is, the Gita, Patanjali, Bhagavat, there's so many yoga sutras. 
asanas are a very small little part. The whole concept of karma yoga is yoga in action, applying spiritual divine principles to our occupation, to our relationships, to our work. That's karma yoga. Jnana yoga is, is based on study. Aham brahmasmi. Studying s s scriptures, studying philosophical works, and learning how to live armed with the, as Sripad Shankaracharya says, and Krishna says also in Gita, armed with the sword of knowledge and wisdom, where we could cut through illusions and cut through distractions in our life. That's jnana yoga. And within astanga yoga, there are eight limbs, and asana is one of them. The great asana yoga teachers that I've met and learned from, they taught unless one practices yama and niyama, that means living with high values, living with character, living with restraint of our lower tendencies. Because each of us has a higher self and a lower self. The higher self is forgiving and loving and kind and humble, and the lower nature is greedy and arrogant and selfish. And the yamas and the yamas are actual process that we can, a framework that we can apply to our life to live with character and values, to choose the higher principles of life rather than the lower distractions. But it only works when we're sincere, when we really want to, and when we have teachers who really inspire us to be sincere by their sincerity. <coughs> And then Patanjali's main um, principles of Astanga Yoga, Pranayam for the mind, and then Pratyahara, restraining one's senses, meditation, and ultimately absorption of the mind in the Supreme. We learned in that story about Dhruva and Narada, he taught him Astanga, and the, the main part was meditating on loving service to the Supreme. And then there's Bhakti Yoga, which actually includes all other yogas. But it, all other of the formulas of yoga They are harmonized with bhakti when we are doing it for the purpose of some sabir haditoshana, pleasing the Supreme Lord. And Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita, yogi nama pisaravesham madkitena tarajana, that of all processes of yoga, the very essence and goal is to love God and to learn to be an instrument of that love in whatever we do. Sarva dharman parityajya mamekam sharanam pracha aham tvam sarva papivyo moksha yishami masaja. Krishna concludes the Gita abandon all varieties of dharma and sharanagati. Just take shelter, surrender with love. My beloved Guru Srila Prabhupada, he said, if you have a million dollars, all your five dollar, ten dollar, and a hundred dollar problems are solved. So we have, we actually awaken that love within our hearts. 
that ananda, that happiness, that peace, that meaningfulness, it includes everything and everyone else. So Raghunath is a very humble person. <clears throat> He's dynamic. The combination of being dynamic and humble is, is, is quite exciting. <laughs> it's very attractive also. And whatever I say about Raghunath is, is also Bridget, who is somehow or other supporting him in every way. He's supporting her in every way raising their beautiful children. But Raghunath really cares. He's beyond sectarian concepts because he's not just trying to prove something. He's trying to help people. We have physical ailments. Of course we care about them. We have mental issues, so many mental issues these days. We care, we care about people who are suffering like that. But if we could somehow or other really harmoniously, because you can't really reach the spiritual without going through the mind and the body. <laughs> that's how we communicate with our body and mind and we communicate to others through their bodies and minds to awaken the soul, the jivatma, to awaken with love beyond birth, beyond death. And Raghunath has, has a taste of that. So whatever he's doing, he's really doing with love. He's really to and trying to inspire love from his students because it's where real happiness is. Now that you are getting your, is it a certificate? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing here actually. <laughs> I, I forgot to ask. <laughs> but you're graduating. Huh? Three hundred hours. Make them five hundred hours. Congratulations. <laughs> Three hundred hours is a lot. <laughs> but it's a great blessing because the greatest blessing in the whole creation is the opportunity to serve in a meaningful way. People can acquire money, skills, fame, but it's all, it's all stolen away from us in time. And it doesn't, it gives no fulfillment to the heart. The society is actually civilized, actually cultured. When we are educated, our children are educated, everyone is educated, that real wealth, real success, true greatness is the values that we hold sacred in our life and the integrity in how we live with those values even in the face of temptation and fear. We call that character. Srila Prabhupada said, philosophy has little or no value without good character. And character is really is based on the principle of respecting others, even in spite of our differences to honor and respect the sacredness of life, 
the presence of God in everyone's heart. To honor and respect the environment. Because it's God's property. It's not ours to exploit or manipulate. And where there's that respect, there's karuna, there's compassion. To live with respect and compassion for others. To see the unity and all the diversity of this world. His character. Spiritual character. And whatever we teach, whether we're teaching asanas or pranayam, or whether we're teaching in a college, or whether we're teaching children, or whether we're teaching in our workplace. We're, we're really leaders when we honestly try to exemplify these qualities. That's the heart of yoga. To love Krishna, to love God, to love the presence of God in everyone. to serve with that love. So now you are all being certified to do like this. <laughs> so I congratulate you. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Goy, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoy. When we associate with people who really uplift us, then it gives us the strength we need to overcome our other tendencies. Because we understand this is what's important. The place we're sitting at Govardhan Eco Village, it's a place of to remember one of the holiest holy places in Vrindavan, in India. Srila Prabhupada and other great spiritual teachers said, it's the heart of the universe. This is a little replica. If you go to Vrindavan today, it doesn't look like this. But when I lived in Vrindavan in 1971, and when Srila Prabhupada lived in Vrindavan from 1959 to 1965, it looked very much like this. It felt very much like this, a courtyard where Sri Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Jiva Goswami, these great Goswamis, they would meet every day discuss their love for Krishna, Krishna's pastimes, chant Krishna's names, and discuss how to write literatures that will inspire the world to understand this bhakti. In 1972, Srila Prabhupada called devotees from all over the world for what he called the Nectar of Devotion classes. During the month of Kartik, which is the most sacred month of the year, usually October, November time, and for a whole month, he sat in this courtyard with about the same amount of people as here today. That's about how many people came, and they all sat, and he spoke from the nectar of devotion. Mm tape recordings. I was just listening to one of the lectures this morning. That's why I'm late. <laughs> yes, devotees came from all parts of the world, being in a little courtyard just like this, to hear about how to how to awaken this love for the Supreme. 
And it's very interesting. I write about this in the journey home. When I was living in Vrindavan, for a little less than a year, my visa ended and I had to leave. And just before I went to this Radha Damodar temple, because I would love to come to Rupa Goswami's Samadhi, is this. <clears throat> Some of the deepest transformations of my life at the time happened sitting here. At one time I came and there were two people living here. Because in those days there was no Western people in Vrindavan. There was just two of us. And then I saw two more. They were living right here. And that was Yamuna Devi, who was one of the great legends of love and devotion in the world, and who at that time had a husband whose name was Guru Das. And that incredible, illustrious person has, happens to be sitting right before your eyes. And I would just be sit, I would sit with them and just listen to them talk to each other. All they talked about was serving their guru and serving Krishna and serving others. And they were, they, it was so deep. I was thinking, this is what it's about. You know, I'm learning so many things and I'm meeting so many people, but this is what it's actually about, what these two people are doing, how they live. For my guru's mission, Iskan, the first leader for Vrindavan, the temple president, was Guru Das. So the Prabhupada had so much trust in him. He was the first person in Iskan to take other people around Vrindavan on tours and tell them about it, the places. And he and Yamuna and his team, they organized that event in 1972 for Srila Prabhupada to come and host devotees from all over the world. This morning he was speaking. When he speaks, it's enthralling, it's thrilling, it's inconceivable, and it's wonderful. joined in Hate ashbury San Francisco, in 1967. I don't know how much you know about that era of history, but 67 was called the Summer of Love in Hate ashbury And I happened to be there this summer in San Francisco, and there, I was sitting in Golden Gate Park. It was really interesting. These birds are reminding me, because I did some events in San Francisco area, and then I had to leave for an event in Los Angeles on this particular day, but I went to Golden Gate Park, to this little hill where Prabhupada used to sit and chant. I just chanted my japa there. And as I was chanting japa, little birds were just jumping around. They were flying and then coming and jumping and eating. I don't know what they were eating, but they looked like they were eating something. And they were singing so sweetly. And I remembered a couple of years ago, I was in Italy and I went to a place called Canara. That's where St. Francis he gave a lecture to birds, and all the birds listened. <laughs> it's 
It's a very famous place. But it's just a field. There's nothing there but a field. A little stone that has a carving in it. St. Francis preached to birds here. <laughs> So then I was thinking San Francisco is named after St. Francis, because in Italy, he's not St. Francis, he's Saint Fran San Francesco. And in Mexico, it's San Francisco. So I was thinking, here I am in San Francisco, in the place that Prabhupada used to sing, looking at the birds. I shouldn't leave here. So I stayed. <laughs> An extra day, and I was walking around, and there was a museum for the Summer of Love. It was actually it was a museum exhibition for the Haight Ashbury, the Summer of Love. Did any of you go to that? It's over, so don't worry about it. <laughs> But I went in, and one of the, it, it was exhibitions about what happened in those days. And there I saw a big photo in a prominent place of Guru Das. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you saw that. It was amazing. <laughs> He came from there, he went to Brindavan, he became the first temple president of Brindavan for our society, he lived there, he helped build a beautiful temple, he lived right here at the Radha Damodar temple. I introduce Guru Das, but before I do, to get back to the subject of today, I sincerely congratulate all of you. And I'm, of course, there's other yoga teachers here who have come. And I'm speaking especially about Raghunath today because his students, this occasion is for you, but you're very fortunate. Please keep connected with each other. Please keep connected with the beloved of our hearts. Thank you very much.